Former special counsel John Durham appearing before the House Intelligence Committee today for closed door testimony on his findings over the FBI's handling of the Trump Russia probe. He found the Bureau failed to uphold their mission of strict fidelity to the law, though he did not recommend any specific policy changes. Durham will publicly testify before the Judiciary Committee tomorrow. Joining me now, California Congressman, member of the House Intelligence, Appropriations, Science, Space, and Technology Committees, Mike Garcia, who will be questioning Durham today behind closed doors. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, Cheryl. Thanks for having me. So what are you going to ask him? What do you want to know from John Durham? Well, what I'm looking for from John Durham is we've seen the unclassified version. We've also read a, a classified annex to his uh, Durham report, which, uh, you know, was very uh, comprehensive, over uh, six million pages that he went through, uh, something like 190 subpoenas and hundreds of witnesses that he talked to. So, so very comprehensive, but not exhaustive, meaning he got to the fact that what the FBI did was abuse their power, that a few bad actors within the DOJ were forcing this— in, uh, this investigation into this Russia collusion hoax, which, which turned out to be uh, a complete hoax. Uh, but what he didn't do was get to the, the puppeteers, the folks that were actually calling the shots behind the scenes and who was compelling these relatively low-level uh, workers within the DOJ to, to make these mistakes, to abuse their power and weaponize this, uh, this FISA warrant, but, but also weaponize this entire investigation leading up to an election. So uh, this is what I want to get to from Durham. It's, it's clear that He's, he's an excellent investigator, that he's got a, uh, a comprehensive report, but it's not exhaustive. And I want to know why we didn't go down certain routes. Why didn't we subpoena Comey, McCabe, and others who were uh, clearly the shot callers behind this operation? And uh, uh, he'll be a little more candid, hopefully, behind closed doors. Do, well, I was going to say, do you limit the scope of your questions today to just the Russia collusion, or do you broaden this out to bring this more, this you know, the conversation more up to date? What else could you learn from him because of his investigation? We've talked a lot about the politicization of the of the DOJ, uh, of the FBI, uh, whether it's with the, the you know the the lack of prosecution or the lack of moving forward with James Comer and the Hunter Biden story, or uh, with what's going on uh, now with with former President Trump and these these the, the last federal indictment. Do, is it? Can you broaden that scope out? Are you comfortable doing yeah, I'm looking, that? Uh, um, yeah, I'm certainly looking to broaden it out. And to the theme, the common denominator is is the why. Who's driving these conversations? Right. We know with this IC51 document uh, that was put out uh, just recently that that it was, uh, you know, then uh, uh, campaign advisor Blinken, who is now Secretary of State Blinken, who ignited this letter that asked uh, leaders within the uh, intelligence uh, community to come together and say that this uh, Hunter Biden laptop story was all Russia propaganda, right? Uh, in parallel, we're seeing common themes like the, the Russia collusion hoax. So there's common denominators here, uh, here that I want to get to. And, that, and I think that's the overarching question. It's not just the, the, the specific details of each one of these cases, but at a macro level, who's driving these, uh, the, these, these actions and uh, who's frankly pushing and pulling the levers that ultimately led to the weaponization of an entire DOJ? Um, and, 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 you know, and this is what the Durham report report, uh, as well as the Mueller report, have confirmed that this was fraudulent, this was uh, uh, corruption, this was uh, folks literally lying on FISA applications and putting in information that had not been corroborated to come to conclusions that were, frankly, self-fulfilling conclusions. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, this is, this is the, the root cause of, of what we're seeing over the last, uh, call it, six years now, and, and that's what I want to be getting at. You mentioned Secretary of State Blinken. He's claiming the relationship between the U.S. and Beijing is now stable. That's what he says after yesterday's meeting with Xi Jinping. Ping. They met for a little more than half an hour. And then Blinken says that the U.S. has, quote, moved on from the spy balloon incident. Watch this. So with Beijing, the balloon incident is over. It's water well, under the bridge. We did what we needed to do to protect our interests. We said what we needed to say and made clear what we needed to make clear in terms of this not happening again. And so uh, as long as it doesn't, that, uh, that chapter should be closed. Congressman, your thoughts? 
<laughs> this is typical appeasement behavior. This is why we got to where we are. Look, the simple fact is they want they want to put this behind us, this balloon uh, uh, issue behind us, because it was a, a colossal failure. They don't want us to keep, keep talking about why we didn't shoot this thing down over the west coast of our of our nation before it traversed the entire continental United States, Canada, and Alaska, and then ultimately shooting it down over the east coast. They don't want to talk about the fact that we spent close to a million dollars in missiles to shoot down hobby balloons that were reported in the wake of that incident. It's just like every other crisis, whether it's inflation that they call transitory, that whether it was Afghanistan, Afghanistan withdrawal that they called a logistical success. They want to put these things behind us. It's very dangerous when you go to China and your takeaway is that we are back to normal relations with them uh, in the wake of, uh, you know, on an annual basis, four to six hundred billion dollars of intellectual property being stolen, uh, the largest uh, genocide in the history of the planet since World War II with the Uyghur prosecutions and political prosecutions, uh, to say that we have normalized relations when they are encircling uh, Taiwan with a, with a record number of airspace encroachments. Uh, it's a very dangerous thing to, to, to continue to appease a dragon that is clearly uh, looking to not only annex Taiwan in the next several years, but to also become the only leading superpower on the global stage and, and surpassing not only the United States, but everyone else around us. Uh, and that, that is what China is trying to do, and, and Blinken is, is frankly enabling this behavior. Okay. I, I, I've got former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins with me on set. You were nodding, your head, you were shaking your head yeah. during that. Uh, Congressman, one of the things you just brought up is this idea of normalizing relations is not normalized, especially when your main target was to get back military communications, top-level military communications, so that you can de-conflict and you can make sure that, and, and your military, my military background as well. Th that is a, you cannot say we're at normalized relations when that is an issue still out there and we have planes and ships that are intertangling all the time. Why can't we push this further and why is the Biden administration just completely deaf to this? Yeah, I don't understand it either. I think that's a great point. And, uh, look, if, if sending Blinken over was the panacea to our diplomatic relations problems with China, we should have done it uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this will this this won't solve anything. I do I, I do believe that we need communications at the highest levels. Uh, ideally, it's the commander in chief talking to uh, Chairman Xi of the CCP. Uh, but in this case, I'd rather have Blinken in these negotiations. But we need to continue to grind China. We need to continue to put more friction on them, more resistance on them, help them under understand the repercussions of annexing Taiwan mm -hmm. is going to be on a, on a scale larger than, than what uh, the Russians saw on the global stage when they tried to annex Ukraine. They need to recognize that there's a strong deterrence there, and we need to establish that deterrence. It's not just a military presence. It's an economic stranglehold on China that we need to start ascribing mm -hmm. to. This, this includes boycott, divestment, and sanctions against China, similar to what we started to do with Russia when it invaded Ukraine. But until we do that, Xi's not going to recognize the United States is a meaningful deterrence in the in the in the South China Sea, uh, and we need to continue to help uh, Taiwan build its uh, defense forces. Obviously, but uh, right now our president is showing such weakness on the global stage that uh, I think Chairman Xi recognizes the next couple of years as the target of opportunity. Congressman Mike Garcia, Congressman, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, guys. All right, looking Thanks, forward Cheryl. to that testimony later today.